Dear learners, welcome to this presentation on steam distillation. But before starting to our today's presentation, if you have still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please subscribe by clicking on subscribe button and do watch this video till the end to get more information about steam distillation and apparatus use for steam distillation on laboratory scale. So after watching this video, the learners will be able to understand the theory of steam distillation, explain the apparatus used for steam distillation for laboratory scale, then state the applications of steam distillation in pharmacy and discuss about the Florentine receivers. So let us start. First starting with the theory of steam distillation. So when two immiscible liquids, okay, now immiscible liquids for example they can be oil and water uh, like oil and water as they are immiscible like that when two immiscible liquids are heated together then the mixture boils okay when two immiscible liquids they are heated together the mixture boils when the mixture boils when the sum of vapor pressure equals to the atmospheric pressure okay then the temperature at which the mixture boils is lower okay the temperature at which the mixture boils is lower than that of either of the liquid. That is the boiling point of the mixture is lower. Okay, the boiling point of the mixture is lower than that of the liquid with lower boiling point. So this is about the theory of steam distillation. So next point that is apparatus used or steam distillation for laboratory scale okay so the apparatus consists of steam can now this steam can it is fitted with a cork that is having two holes okay so here you can see the steam can diagram okay it has two holes and to one hole the safety tube Okay, the safety tube is attached. So, in one hole, a long tube passes through this hole and reaches almost to the bottom of the steam can. As we have seen here, the steam can, it is fitted with a cork and to this cork, there are two holes. In one hole, the safety tube is passed. Okay, that reaches to the bottom of the steam can. Then this tube acts as a safety tube so that if the pressure inside the steam is too much, okay, if the pressure inside the steam is too much, it is relieved by forcing water out of it. When steam starts coming out from the safety tube, it indicates that the steam can is almost empty. Then through another hole, okay, the bent tube is passed that leads the steam to the flask containing the non-aqueous liquid. This tube should reach almost to the bottom of the flask. So here you can see in the diagram through the second hole, the bent tube from the steam can it is passed and it is it carries the steam from the steam can to the flask containing the non aqueous liquid okay so this is the flask containing non aqueous liquid so here we have seen about the steam can then safety tube bent tube and flask containing non-aqueous liquid okay then 
the delivery tube carrying the vapors from flask is connected to the condenser okay the delivery tube carries the vapors that are arising from the flask okay so the delivery tube is attached to the flask and that is again connected to the condenser and this delivery tube carries the vapors arising from the flask to the condenser and there in condenser the vapors get converted into liquid okay and this liquid gets collected in the receiver the non aqueous liquid is placed in the flask a small quantity of water is added to it the steam can and flask are heated simultaneously okay the steam can and the flask that is containing the non aqueous liquid they are heated simultaneously so that a uniform flow of steam passes through the boiling mixture so here you can see condenser into the condenser the uh, receiver is also present where the distillate is collected okay so this is the flask that is containing the non aqueous liquid to the flask the delivery tube is attached and this delivery tube is connected to the condenser and the vapors arising from the flask the delivery tube carries the vapors to the condenser and in the condenser the vapors get converted into liquid and that liquid is collected in the receiver so this was about the apparatus used and also the working of the steam distillation apparatus that is used for laboratory scale okay so here you can see the diagram of steam distillation and the working actual actual working of steam distillation and these are the different parts so as we can see here these are the source of heating okay that is burners and steam can and so the it is the cork it has two holes in one hole the safety tube is passed up and to the second cork the bent tube is attached and bent tube is passed into the flask that is containing the non aqueous liquid okay now this bent tube carries the steam from the steam can and passes into the flask containing non aqueous liquid and now the vapors that are arising in the flask containing non aqueous liquid these vapors are carried from by the delivery tube okay delivery tube carries these vapors and carries it and transfer it to the condenser and here in condenser the vapors get condensed and they get converted into liquid and that liquid is collected in the receiver okay the distillate is collected in the receiver this is the water inlet and the water outlet of condenser so this distillation is continued until all the non aqueous liquid has distilled over okay now the distillate is then collected in the florentine receiver where oil is completely separated from the water so the distillate is collected in the florentine receiver so this is our next point that we are going to see the florentine receiver so these florentine receivers they are of two types the first type is type 1 florentine receiver that is used for separation of oil that is heavier than water okay and type 2 florentine receiver it is used for separation of oil lighter than water okay now let us see one by one first that is oil heavier than water now this florentine receiver has two types okay it has two types 
for collecting oil a tap is attached near the bottom of the vessel okay and for water to overflow the tap is fitted near the top of the vessel so here in the diagram you can see for collecting oil the tap is fitted near the bottom of the vessel and for water to overflow the tap is fitted near the top of the vessel okay so this is about oil heavier than water type 1 florentine receiver now let us see second type florentine receiver that is oil lighter than water type 2 florentine receiver that is used for separation of oil lighter than water now this receiver has one tap okay now for oil the tap is fitted near the top okay the tap is fitted near the top is an outlet for the flow of oil and for water at the bottom okay for oil tap is fitted at the top okay an outlet for the flow of oil and for water at the bottom okay at the bottom fitted with siphon which works when gets filled with water so here in the diagram you can see here at the top the tap is fitted that is for oil okay and for water here we can see at the bottom it is fitted with a siphon okay which works when it gets filled with the water so this was about the florentine receivers type 1 and type 2 now next point that is applications in pharmacy okay of steam distillation in pharmacy first is it is used for the preparation of volatile oils okay it is used for the preparation of volatile oils next application is it is used to determine the percentage of volatile oil in the drug okay it is used to determine the percentage of volatile oil in the drug the next application is is used for the distillation of volatile oil for its purification without any decomposition so this is very important okay for it is used for the distillation of volatile oil for its purification without any decomposition so this was about the applications i hope you have understood the steam distillation its theory and its apparatus its working then florentine receivers type 1 and type 2 florentine receivers then application so if you like this video then press like button and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for your patience listening keep learning